with what exactly is tranexamic acid. This segment I'm going to tell you right now is going to be really short because ultimately the question we want to answer here is, does tranexamic acid actually do anything? We know that there are some questions on what exactly does it do? Is it truly helpful? And honestly, for me, I kind of understand because a lot of times tranexamic acid products come with other actives. So it does feel like you know, it's like trying to is there, is there really a superstar active yeah. or is it just there because the name sounds cool? Yeah. So you guys have probably heard us mention this already. Tranexamic acid uh, used to be used as an injection for those that um, had excessive bleeding, specifically for women, mm-hmm. maybe um, had really heavy periods. Mm-hmm. Um, and what they noticed is that those who received this injection, it seemed like their hyperpigmentation was fading. And after that, they actually then started testing it for specifically hyperpigmentation and melasma as an oral supplement. And then now, I think at this point, there's definitely been a lot more data as a topical. Yes. So I, I had to chuckle a little bit because I was like, dude, if, you, if you're one of the poor women that suffer from excessive bleeding yeah. from periods and you just you have to get this drug to stop the bleeding, yeah. I feel like the glow up can come from just not bleeding <laughs> so much anymore. That's so true. Right? That is so true. And I feel like postpartum when your body's going through healing yeah. and stuff. And I think, a, well, a lot of people go through skin changes during pregnancy, then yeah. postpartum because of hormone change and stuff. And during this time, when I look at myself, I'm like, I swear, like the... If I feel like I look better, it's just because your body just went to battle yeah. for like 10, 11, 12 months. Yeah. And then you wake up one day and you magically, your baby finally let you sleep eight yeah. hours. You wake up, you're like, this, this is better than any topicals I've ever used. I look amazing. <laughs> That's so true. And you know what's funny is when we talked about tranexamic acid and we launched our own gold standard with mm-hmm. 5% tranexamic acid, I actually had some of my doctor friends message and be like, y'all put what? in that product because they were like shocked that it was actually now could be a topical ingredient yep. and obviously for them as a topical percentage that sounds quite high so yep. they were like oh wow i didn't know that it could be in skincare so long story short it's now very much in skincare it's very popular in terms of mechanism i think it always feels like the default answer is that it's a tyrosinase inhibitor but i do want to mention that now it has been looked at in quite a lot of detail and I did want to share a study. This is actually an in vitro study. And I really liked it just because of the way it was designed. Because mm-hmm. the thing about hyperpigmentation and any pigmentation in general is that there are different types. And with different types, there's different types of pigments. All these pigments are generated from different causes, also need to be treated slightly different. Um, but a lot of times it just gets kind of like all muddled together. Muddled together yeah. right? Um, but this paper actually wanted to look at three specific types of hyperpigmentation. So that's melasma, acne PIH, and solar lentigo. And so if you don't know what solar lentigo is, it's generally it looks like um, dark brown spots mm-hmm. that are a little bigger in size. And in this study, what they wanted to do was, first of all, they wanted to see from these three different types of hyperpigmentation scenarios, what markers would be flagged for this. That's actually really cool because mm-hmm. Um, we talked. We talk a lot about hyperpigmentation biology as a very general concept. Mm-hmm. It might sound really fleshed out, mm-hmm. but reality is, as biology goes, it can be so much more complex than that. Yeah, and so we'll show the charts here. But ultimately, the it's not really even about the numbers. It's to show like the breakdowns and the markers that they're looking at, and which ones flag for which type. So ultimately, through that, they know that the two markers they're looking at is the IL six. And the ET1. And the IL-6 is actually really common. This yeah. is something that a marker that's often flagged in Inflammation all... yes, and other things. Exactly. So mm-hmm. that one, I feel like it's kind of more like, okay. But ultimately, we do know that inflammation is a definitely um, something that can spur on and aggravate um, your hyperpigmentation situ- situation. Um, the other thing I did want to mention, too, that's kind of cool about this study is ultimately they tie this to a term that I don't think any of us have really heard about, which is called melanocyte dendricity. And I think this is something that is going to be a lot more common in probably like, I want to say like five years. More probably. probably, yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> but ultimately, what this is looking at is melanocytes. They kind of look like hands. They've got little like tendrils. Mm -hmm. And the tendrils are the ones that are actually going to be sharing and depositing pigment. Yes. Okay. The idea is that the more tendrils you have and the longer that they are, 
the more pigmentation will produce. Mm -hmm. So they're actually looking at how can you reduce or even prevent more tendrils from growing. And I think that is a fascinating concept. <laughs> yeah, it is actually pretty cool. And Victor and I are starting to see these yeah. earlier studies that kind of look at this pathway specifically, not yeah. just tyrosinase as a rate yeah. inhibitor. Um, and that I think there's a lot of fascinating theory that we won't go into too much detail here in terms of what causes these tendrils to grow, mm -hmm. how do you stop them, and once these tendrils form in a melanocyte, how can you reduce it, yeah. or do you just have to kill the melanocyte? <laughs> but doesn't it? It's so crazy because it feels a little bit like sci-fi, yeah, right? Like yeah. it's like you're almost wanting to morph your mm -hmm. cell or prevent it from like taking shape. Um, I, I actually also really want to read the studies that didn't work. Yeah. Oh no, it backfired. Now it's like, like twenty thousand tendrils. Oh <laughs> yeah, no. Exactly. So very cool all around. And on top of that, what they further did was they wanted to look at a couple actives that could prevent this dendricity from occurring. So they actually looked at niacinamide and tranexamic acid, which is great. So remember, this is all in vitro. So how this plays out topically still would require further testing. But ultimately, what they saw was niacinamide actually helped with both markers, the IL-6 and the ET1, mm -hmm. whereas tranexamic really only helped with ET1. But the idea is that it does play a part in mm -hmm. this aspect. So ultimately, I'm not going to get too much more into the details, but the idea would be that you know, um, they're ultimately looking at a different type of mechanism. They think tranexamic acid and most honestly, most actives do have multiple parts to play right. in how they provide that skin benefit. So this is one of those that I think is just a really cool story to share. A lot of skin conditions out there, Victoria and I would love to talk more about the biology, but the reality is it's either too complex to narrow down yeah. to what helps or it's just not looked at at all. It's yeah. like they do a clinical, it works, wrap it up. I don't care why it yeah. works, it does. Yeah, um, exactly. And I love that for hyperpigmentation, they're getting so granular because yeah. it is something that takes a kitchen sink approach. So to find these different pathways, it kind of sheds more light into what kind of combinations do better. Yeah, exactly. So with that, um, we're gonna talk about, does it actually do anything? But before that, let's take a quick break. <laughs> Speaking of tranexamic acid, we have to talk about our own tranexamic acid champion, Gold Standard. We consider this the AHA Gold Standard in tackling stubborn skin texture and dull pigmentation, and it does include 5% tranexamic acid. This booster can be used two ways. You can either add a drop, mix well with your serum as a nightly boost to your routine, or you can use it once a week as a 10-minute rinse-off mask. If you're curious <laughs> to try, please use the coupon code CCPODCAST2024 for a 15% off your first order. 